What's up everyone? I'm Matt with Ozark Overland Adventures. And in this video, I want to do an update on a video I did, I don't know, maybe six months ago on how much it costs to build a Gladiator. Um, a lot has changed on my Gladiator since then. And just, I, I want to update that video, give you a, a walkthrough of everything that's changed. And just like in that video, I'm gonna be completely transparent with you and tell you what products were given to me by the companies for me to use and try and give feedback and you know give information for you and what products I paid for myself out of my own pocket and tell you, you know, do I think it's worth it? The stuff that was given to me, is it something that I would spend my own money on? And if it's something that uh, you know I did spend my own money on, am, am I glad I did that? And so that's, that's the point of this video. Um, I did another video not too long ago, maybe a couple months ago on a one year update. And even some things have changed on the Gladiator since that video. It's, it's ever evolving and you know, it, it's, it's just a lot of fun. I will not hide the fact that, you know, having a YouTube channel like this one is crazy cool that companies want to work with us. They want us to test their products. They want us to, to provide feedback and you know give feedback for for you the consumer um, and it's a really very cool very strange still world that we that create you know overlanding youtube content live in uh, it's just a known fact companies do give us stuff and you know it, it does allow us to outfit our rigs very nicely um, and, and it's i will definitely tell you it's a really cool life. Um, and it allows us to test a bunch of different products and you know, learn the pros and cons of each and you know, change up how we, how we build our vehicles um, to, to make them better. This is my Gladiator. I use this regularly, weekly. I'm out camping in it, off-roading in it. And so the, how I have built this has been very intentional. The changes I have made, I have done so not just because a company offered something to me, but because a company offered something to me and I saw the need and the benefit to make that change. And I'll discuss some of that uh, as I go through this video. So I hope you enjoy it. Ozark Overland Adventures is proudly supported by The More Expo, the Midwest's number one adventure travel consumer expo. Artemis Overland Hardware, they have one of the largest selections of overlanding gear available. Big Iron Overland Rally, where Overland Expo meets Music Festival. Shop Overland Apparel, your source for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise and more. Open Road Four Wheel Drive, makers of affordable, high quality winches and recovery gear. Outback RV of Texas, the best place for Overland Adventure trailers. And Moon, makers of the Moonshade Portable Awning. First on the list is the Gladiator itself. When I bought this in May of 2021, almost basically a year and a half ago from when I'm making this video, um, this cost just over $60,000. Now, specking a 2023 Gladiator out with the exact same build that I have on this, all the options that I have on this, comes to just over $64,000. The fact that the gladiator, the, the exact same gladiator, has gone from sixty thousand to sixty-four thousand dollars in a year and a half, is is surprising to me. Um, that's a pretty significant bump for no change at all. Uh, it's uh, th th so there's a four thousand dollar increase right there just in the cost of the gladiator. Now there's a lot of things that have changed here on the front end, uh, starting with the suspension. I did start off with the rock crawler three inch X factor lift. And it, it was a, a, a good lift at first, but as I started adding weight in the back, it really started to droop. The springs are just not rated for that much weight. So um, Clayton reached out and did provide their three and a half inch premium kit for the Gladiator. And oh my gosh, I absolutely love it. I did pay for the rock crawler lift. Uh, Clayton did provide their lift uh, for this. But the difference is night and day. Uh, the Clayton lift rides so much better. The springs handle the weight so much better. The control arms are so much beefier and overall it just flexes like crazy. Absolutely love this lift. I wish I had um, known about Clayton when I first got my Gladiator. That way I could have skipped the step of owning the rock crawler 
and gone straight for the Clayton, even if I had to pay for it like I did at the very beginning. I was just buying all the stuff for it. Um, I absolutely wish I had paid for the Clayton at the beginning and, and skip the whole having to change lifts thing. But, you know, then I wouldn't have the comparison and be able to relay that info to you. So, you know, maybe it's a good thing. The rock crawler lift came in at just over $2,700. The Clayton lift is just over $3,300. So $500 difference, $600 difference between the two. Uh, is, 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 it, is the Clayton lift worth that $600 premium? Absolutely. No, no questions about it. The Clayton lift is just absolutely solid and I love it. Up next on the front end are the shocks. Uh, very, very dirty shocks. I just got back from a trip in the Ozarks this weekend and I haven't really cleaned everything up yet. But um, I started with the Bilstein 5100s. Those are very basic, inexpensive monotube shocks. Those come in at right at $100 a piece, so 400 bucks for the set. And when I was at Overland Expo Pacific Northwest, um, the marketing manager from Elka, who was a fan of the channel, came up to me and asked if I was familiar with Elka. I'd heard the name before, um, but wasn't aware. Elka is very big in the side-by-side uh, -side ATV space, um, motorcycles, and are just now starting to get into the, the, the Jeep world uh, and providing shocks for Jeeps. And he asked me, hey, we've got a new line of shocks coming out. Would love for you to test them, no strings attached. Didn't even ask me to make a video. He just wanted my opinion and my feedback. And I said, yeah, absolutely. Would love to, would love to test those for you. And what they sent me was their adjustable remote reservoir shocks. They are the two and a half inch DC in the front, the three inch DC in the rear. I never knew the significance that remote reservoir shocks made especially adjustable ones and being able to dial in the ride that suits your needs. You know, my Gladiator is a heavy one, so I'm able to dial in that soft compression and mitigate body roll, but still have a, a softer, hard compression for when I'm hitting bumps and when I'm hitting ruts in the road, that sort of thing, and really dial in my ride. Um, like I said, the, the Bilsteins were, you know, 100 bucks a piece, 400 bucks. These come in at a, right at $3,700 for the full set of four, which is a lot of money um, to spend on shocks. Now, um, would I have spent my money on that uh, originally? The answer is no, because I just had no clue. Um, I absolutely had no clue. Knowing what I know now, do I think if you're driving and wheeling as much as, as we do, um, there is definitely some value in purchasing a really nice set of shocks like this. You do notice the difference and it does make a difference both on and off road. Um, so knowing what I know now, building a new rig, would I go for shocks like this as much as I am off road and as much as I am, you know, as many miles as I'm putting on this thing, uh, yes, uh, these are definitely, I, I think, worth it. Necessary, no, but if you've got the funds, uh, you know, if you've got the, the money to spend on a set of really nice shocks uh, like these Elkas, how, I, I, you will notice the difference. Also, just to try out, Elka did send me their steering stabilizer. Uh, I'm not a big fan of aftermarket steering stabilizers. I've said that on the channel in the past. I think for the most part, aftermarket steering stabilizers, especially dual steering stabilizers, are just a waste of money. The factory one does just fine if your suspension's dialed in. Uh, but they said, hey, we're gonna throw this in too. I want you to give us feedback on it. And the one thing I do like about the steering stabilizer, and this is true for other brands, but when, since I've got the Elka, one thing I do like about the steering stabilizer is it does rotate the steering stabilizer from under the tie rod where it is prone to getting hit on rocks and obstacles and stuff to the top of the tie rod. So it moves it up out of the way, which is, is really nice. Would, uh, the steering stabilizer is uh, 325 bucks. Uh, would I spend 325 bucks on a steering stabilizer when the factory one does just fine? Honestly, probably not. Um, I, I, I like it. it. It does tighten up the steering a little bit, but I was happy with a factory one. Uh, I just, the main thing I like it for is that it gets it up out of the way. Uh, but would I, would I spend my money on any 
upgraded factory steering stabilizer. No. no. If you're going to, the Elk is great, but that's just not where I would spend my money because the factory one does just fine. Also new uh, all around are the tires. I started with the Milestar Patagonia uh, MTs in a 37, 1250, 17 size. And I paid for those myself, with, which came in at right at about 1,500 bucks for a set of five tires, which was a really cool deal. I had been running Milestars for years on my JK, knew I wanted those for my Gladiator, and got uh, you know lucky enough to get to talk to the people at Milestar Tires, and they now support our channel. My, both my Gladiator and Kara's Wrangler have been in their booths at a couple of the different Overland Expos. So I am very proud to represent Milestar Tires and run their new Patagonia MT-02 versions, uh, which is a, a newer compound, the same tread design basically, but they tweaked the compound. Uh, the originals were known for being super sticky and, and really good off-road, but on-road wearing really fast, wearing sometimes unevenly. You did have to rotate them very often um, and uh, that was just a, a known thing with those tires, but they were super sticky and super awesome off-road. The new compound in the MT-02s, um, still super great off-road, as if you've been watching the channel, I, I think I've shown that, um, but they wear better on pavement, and there's no uneven tread wear on these. I've put over 20,000 miles on these, and they're doing fantastic. Um, I, I am in love with these tires, and that's I was in love with these tires before I developed the relationship with Milestar. And now that I've had the O2 versions, even more in love with these tires. So uh, that has worked out well. The new tires, this is a 38 inch, 1350, 17 tire. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure if I'm noticing a huge difference going from the 37 to the 38, but I, I mean, hey, 38, fantastic. Uh, I, I do love this tire and when I, it's time, you know, when these are time to be replaced, I'll replace them with another 38 inch, 1350 very happy with this size tire, especially on a rig like the Gladiator. Uh, at the moment, these come in at about $429 a piece. So went from 1500 bucks um, a year and a half ago to, you know, these are now right at about 2150 for a set of five of the 38s in the MT-02, um, which is still from a tire standpoint, a bargain. And, you know, if something happened and, you know, Miles Star and I, parted ways, I'd just be buying these myself because I absolutely love this tire. Also up front is a brand new bumper that I am absolutely in love with. I started with the, the factory steel bumper, then got offered um, a bumper by JC Whitney. And that was a, a very inexpensive bumper for the Wranglers and Gladiators. It came in at 400 bucks. Like I said, that was given to me. Uh, it was a, it was a good bumper. My Issue with it is that the winch set on top of the bumper and came way up here, blocked the, the camera, blocked a lot of the cooling up here. And I just wanted a, a bumper with the winch that sat down in the bumper. I saw this bumper by uh, Reliant Fabrications at Overland Expo West. And as soon as I saw it, I was in love with it, had to have it, and was absolutely prepared to spend my own money on it. Um, after talking to them at the expo, they offered to send me one because they wanted my opinion on it. Um, they wanted to see how I liked it compared to what I was running. And I am just in love with this bumper. I think it looks great. It has the skid plate built in, has provisions for the factory fog lights. The winch is nice and recessed so I can use my front facing camera again. Love the, the low profile hoop on it. Uh, the integrated welded on uh, recovery points. I just think it is a very nice bumper. I love how stubby it is. I've got tons of clearance for my bigger tires. Um, and this one by, uh, you know, Relentless Fabrication is, I, I, I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm thinking about switching to their rear bumper as well. Um, yeah, even if I'm paying for it, I don't care. I, I love the quality of their products. Um, it's just a really good solid bumper. And you know, you know, this one comes in at over a thousand dollars. Would I spend my own money on this? I was going to spend my own money on it. So yes, absolutely. Also new up front is my fair lead. Um, also, I met these guys um, at Overland Expo Pacific Northwest. Uh, the guys from Yankum Ropes, yankum.com. They make this 
very unique fair lead called the groove fair lead that, as you can see, there is no metal attachment points to the rope. You just have your synthetic line. There's no you know, big thimble or hook like I used to. I did have the Factor 55 um, flat link on the front here. That worked well, but it is, it is heavy. And if in the event of a failure, you know, synthetic line is fantastic for not holding kinetic energy and you know, slingshotting things back to you when there's a failure, but there is still some, and it just um, creates a, a whole new level of safety, not having to deal with a big thimble or a big giant metal hook up here that potentially could come back and, and hurt somebody in, in the event of a, a rope failure. So um, they provided this for me at um, Expo Pacific Northwest. It comes in at $265. It did replace my $150 Factor 55 flat link. So it went from $150 for the flat link to $250 for this whole fair lead. And I am absolutely in love with this thing. I've used it in several recovery situations. Uh, one, actually this weekend, just you know, pulling a tree out of the way. And I just love the simplicity. I love that there's no metal thimbles or hooks or anything to deal with. You just, you, you got your, your loop here and your synthetic line. You just, you know, run a soft shackle through it and boom, you're done. I, I absolutely love this and think that is 100% worth the money. Um, if you're not running this type of fair lead from Yankum, this groove fair lead, uh, I suggest you give it a try because it is super, super cool. I love it. Um, also on the front here are these Baja Designs S1 with the flush mount kit. I bought these. Uh, they were, uh, this bumper comes with specific cutouts here for these lights. I do love the way they look. I like the way they integrate into the bumper. I just wish there were other options to go here. Um, uh, would I have spent the money on these if I didn't have to have them to fit specifically for this bumper? The answer is no. Um, I, would, I would not have bought those, but had to buy them because this bumper has the specific cutouts for this light. And unfortunately, no other company makes a light in this design that fits this spot. So that was kind of a bummer. Wasn't real crazy about spending the money. Um, I think it came in at like 260 bucks for the set of two, um, which is, you know, it's, it's a lot of money for LED lights that you, you don't even feel like you, you, you need. Um, but, you know, I'm glad, they have, I'm glad to have them because they do finish out the look of the bumper and, and they're nice lights, but I just, I, I wouldn't have bought them if I didn't have to. Moving around to the back, there's been some significant changes up here, some of which I have covered in previous videos but there's some new things back here that I'm super pumped about. Um, first of which being the um, new bed rack here from Extrusion Overland. I started with the Rebel Off-Road half rack. And it was a good solid rack. I spent um, just over 1300 bucks on that rack and it, it was good, but I quickly became frustrated with it because accessing the gear that ends up in the back of the bed um, was just a royal pain in the butt because you had to crawl up into the bed to, to access things. You couldn't reach in from the side to get to things. And I, I, I became frustrated with that style rack. There's nothing against the Rebel Off-Road rack. It was a good rack. But any of those racks where you know, the, the, all the side panels and stuff are fixed, uh, they just have that same common uh, issue of being able to access stuff that's in the back of the bed. And then I met the guys at Extrusion Overland at the Moore Expo uh, a year ago. And after talking to them, they started coming up with some really innovative ideas uh, with their racks that I just absolutely had to have. And after talking to them, um, they wanted to sponsor the channel and they provided me with this bed rack to test out because it's got some things that are just now coming to the market on their website for sale. And that's things like the, the flip up side panels here. Uh, these are a game changer, an absolute game changer when you're, you know, camping and, and overlanding in your rig as much as we are, uh, being able to access stuff back here. And I was able, even able to take some leftover uh, extruded aluminum that I had, built this shelf back here. So now I've got secure mounting locations for additional totes. And I absolutely love it. I've done a whole video on this. It is, it's basically an erector set for the back of your rig for any truck. And it is absolutely 
worth it. All in with all the different parts and stuff that I have here, the different features that I've got in this rack, comes in at about $2,500 uh, for the rack, which is definitely a lot of money. But as much as I use this, if you're, you know, if you're going to use your rig as an overland rig and, you know, being able to access stuff, mount stuff to the sides, um, you know, it, options like the handles, it's, it's absolutely worth 2,500 bucks. Had I known about extrusion and, um, you know, had they had this stuff out, I would have gone that route a year and a half ago and just bought it instead of paying for the Rebel Off-Road Rack and then ended up swapping it out. Uh, but I absolutely love this thing. This is the absolute best bed rack that you can get. And it's, you're just limited by your imagination of all the cool things you can do with it. Uh, if you're curious about what else you can do with this than, than what I have done, go check out that video. I, I put it out, I don't know, a couple months ago, but absolutely love the Extrusion Overland XTR bed rack, 2,500 bucks. It's, it's worth it for the amount of convenience that this provides in, in accessing your stuff and, and, and how you can build it out. I love it. Also new back here is this. This is my new half width single drawer slide from SHW Off-Road. I am so pumped to have this. I did have two 23-0 75 liter totes that I had purchased for back here. Uh, they served me well. They definitely served me well, but having to deal with the totes, you know, taking them in and out to get to the stuff. Um, when I first bought the Gladiator, I realized there were two things that nobody made that somebody should. One was a half or three quarter height enclosed bed cap, kind of like an RSI smart cap. So that way you can keep your tent down low, but still have everything fully enclosed. Nobody makes that even to today. That's still a bummer. The other thing is a half with single drawer that's finished and that's the key there's our there's some companies that make universal drawers that you could put in here but they're not designed for the specific rig for in my case the gladiator and they're not finished this i was able to take everything out of both 23-0 totes and put it all in here and this comes all the way out and so in this, I've got recovery gear, camping gear, lights, um, kitchen gear, stove, um, and everything is in here. But I absolutely love having this, and just having everything accessible. And I don't have to deal with totes, and I have a nice flat surface to throw my chairs, uh, my lights, uh, water, that sort of stuff up on top of this and not have it just kind of stuck in there oddly. So the drawer system from SHW, um, they did provide this for me because it's a brand new product. They wanted me to test it. Um, thanks to, to Rob at River Overland for making that connection for me. But they were coming out with this system and Rob recommended uh, me to be able to test this and give them feedback on it. And I'm absolutely in love with, with having this at the back of the Gladiator. This drawer for the Gladiator uh, comes in at $1,850. And had they had this out, when I was first got my Gladiator and was building it out, I would have bought it on the spot because um, I, I think it is the perfect solution to be able to keep your fridge down low and having a drawer that keeps the dust and water out, uh, keep your fridge down low. Uh, I, I think this is the, the perfect scenario. I did not want a drawer that came all the way across because I didn't want my fridge up high. Um, and, and I think this is the perfect solution uh, for me. So huge props to the guys at SHW absolutely love this stuff. They're a, a small business just outside of Lexington, Kentucky. They do everything in house and they just create a fantastic product. So if you're looking for a single drawer for the back of your Gladiator, give these guys a call. They are fantastic. So 1,850 bucks worth it. Absolutely. I would have bought it if they'd had this out uh, when I was first building out my Gladiator. Another thing on the back here are the Oracle flush mount taillights. Another thing that I, that I wanted from the beginning, I did buy these. Uh, they're 360 bucks. Uh, it, was, it, it took my first off-road outing in this Gladiator to uh, knock the passenger side taillight out uh, on a tree because they're, it's, the factory taillights are just a ridiculous design that stick way out here and they are a tree magnet. 
you get next to a tree just a little bit off camber and you're gonna hit that tail light and knock it out. And they're stupid expensive. They're like 800 bucks per tail light if you have to, to, to replace them with another factory one. Oracle came out with these flush mounted ones and I love the look of them. Uh, so far I have not hit these on anything. Uh, they work really well. They integrate with the um, proximity sensors for lane changing, that sort of thing. The LED um, reverse lights are stupid bright. The only downside to them is they still don't have a, a fix for um, integrating with the factory LED uh, harness. I do have a warning light that pops up on the dash every time I start it, telling me that my rear tail lights are out. They're not, they work just fine, but the, the LED wiring harness here, integrating with the factory one, there's, there is a fix through uh, with the taser, which I do have, but it's a, a lot of jumping through hoops and I just haven't done it yet because it's just kind of a pain in the butt and I can live with a, a little light on the dash. But that is one thing, they, they do, do still get a warning light on the dash if you had the factory LED package and change to these. It's just, it's something about reading the voltage or something that makes it think the taillights are out or the, the blinkers are out and they're not. But I love the look of them. They actually function as I want them to. And I paid 300 bucks, 360 bucks for them and absolutely worth it. Going through some of the smaller things that I've added recently um, are the, the various roto packs that you see here. I did pay for all of these. I don't have any relationship with roto packs. I've got about $200 worth of roto packs here, which is a little painful, honestly. I hate the fact that these are just uh, two gallons. So, you, you know, this is 70 bucks. And so I've got two of those. Uh, then the water, that's two gallons of water. But they're just so convenient in how you can mount them. That is the selling point for the roto packs. That's why I have the roto packs. You may remember um, earlier videos, uh, we had some, some soft, uh, they're called armadillo bags. Still have them still really like them and think it's a solid product. But when it comes to, you know, mounting them on, on my vehicle to carry extra fuel, that's when it became just a, a little bit of a challenge. So went ahead and just bit the bullet. Now I've got two two gallon gas roto packs. I've got one two gallon water roto packs, which I used this for the first time this weekend. And it was just super handy being able to, you know, pull this off, flip it over. I bought this little, this little turning uh, spout on Amazon for like 10 bucks. And that was just super handy to, to flip it, have water, rinse my hands off, rinse dishes off, that sort of thing. And I'm, I'm a big fan of, of that with the little spout. It's very convenient. But yeah, I, I paid for these, um, would buy them again. I think they're stupid expensive for what they are, unfortunately. But the, the way they mount, I mean, you just can't beat it. Moving over to this side, um, this is it's it's this is not a Pelican case. This is a Harbor Freight um, Apex Apache Tote. I can't remember the name of it, but it's it's from Harbor Freight. Um, I paid fifty five bucks for this. Uh, I I did have a soft sided bag here on the Rebel rack that I put all my recovery gear in. I always say keep your recovery gear as easily as as easily accessible as possible. Uh, don't bury it in the back of a vehicle under your seat. If, if you're in a recovery situation, you need to be able to easily access your recovery gear. And they make these recessed mounts uh, for uh, the Pelican cases, for the Harbor Freight cases, which, I, I mean, this is not original putting a, a case like this on the side of your rack, but being able to have it recessed about uh, four or five inches into the rack and not sticking way out here, that's new, that, that's fantastic. And I, I like that it keeps this tucked in. But I mean, all my recovery gear is in here, my air up, air down, hoses are here, soft shackles, um, tree strap, um, snatch block, tire repair kits, fire starters, gloves, all of that stays in here. And I, I love it. I, like I said, I paid 55 bucks for this at Harbor Freight and it, it served me very well. I would, uh, I, I don't see any reason, you know, going the high dollar Pelican route when $55 for this, it lives outside the vehicle. It's never gotten water in there. Nothing inside there has gotten wet. Um, it's, I mean, for 55 bucks, this is fantastic. 
and tucked into the back of the Gladiator on this little platform that I built out of leftover extruded aluminum. I've got two Front Runner Wolf Packs. These came from Artemis Overland Hardware. I did buy these. These are just great little um, lightweight totes that uh, I was able to build a mount, and these things don't move. I absolutely love them. These cost about 60 bucks a piece, so I've got 120 bucks uh, in these Wolf Pack totes, and fantastic. Highly recommend these. Worth it. These are difficult to show because they're underneath the Jeep, but the uh, skid plates from Asphere are absolutely fantastic. Uh, they did provide those for us to, to try out. And, oh my gosh, I'm so glad they did. Just the, the added protection with, from the aluminum skids, especially the, uh, the one protecting the, the oil pan, the engine skid, that thing is absolutely, I don't even, I, I wouldn't call it worth it. I'd call it necessary because there's no protection uh, there from the factory. So the ask for skid plates all in for the, the full protection transfer case, gas tank and engine skid. $931, they, it comes as a full kit, and definitely think those are worth it. Um, definitely would spend my own money on that. I, I, I think the added protection is, is definitely worth it. Another little thing that is, it's 100% aesthetic, but gosh, I, I love it, are my Topo decals that I got from Sticky Vinyls. Uh, we saw these guys at uh, Overland Expo Mountain West, and they wanted the opportunity to uh, show off what they can do on, on my Gladiator. And so I accepted the offer without hesitation because it's, it's just so cool. This isn't just a, a topo map, uh, it's actually textured. You can run your fingers across of it and feel the topo lines. They have, they have a way of, of actually texturizing the topo and it's totally customizable. Uh, you can send them the location that you want the topography of. Uh, this is the Ozark National Forest. Right up in here is my favorite campsite and series of waterfalls uh, here in the Ozark National Forest. And I've got their, their hood decal, which is actually quite functional because the, the Jeep uh, JL and JT hoods are horrible. This bulge here at uh, reflecting the sun back into your eyeballs. Um, which makes it a, a challenge at time to, to drive. So these are actually functional because it really cuts down on that reflection back into your eyes. And for that alone, I, I wanted something like this. Uh, but got that, they replaced my Rubicon stickers with the same topo, uh, little corner inserts here. I did a crappy job of installing this one, but I think that looks really nice. And then on the back corner here, this stripe, on the back, um, I think this looks really good. So all in, the complete kit is about $475 uh, for, uh, for the vinyl decals. If anything, I think the, the hood decal, absolutely worth it. If, uh, I, I think the rest of them worth it too. I, I just love the added touch that, uh, this, that this gives the, the look of it. I, I'm a big fan. Would I spend my own money on it? Yes, I was actually looking for a solution for this and was just gonna go with the plain boring black, solid black decal for that. But then saw, saw what they can do with the topo stuff and, and was super pumped. Yeah, absolutely worth it. I, I would spend my own money on that because I was about to. Moving to the inside, uh, up here in the front, the only real change has been with my Midland radio. I started out with the Midland MXT 400 and the MXT 500. Both were mounted right here on the side. And now I have the Midland MXT 575. All the controls are on uh, the handset. So that means that I can mount the, the, the brains of the radio here under my steering wheel, hidden out of the way. And when I'm not using my, my radio, I can just unplug it and put it in the glove box. We have purchased Midland products in the past. Midland is a partner of the channel and uh, they provide stuff for us to give away. Uh, they're just fantastic to partner with. But uh, would I pay $399 for the radio? Absolutely. The 50 watts of power really makes a difference when you're on your trail with your friends. They can hear you from much farther away. I wish everyone in my group had the MXT, either 500 or 575s. 
um, but I can tell the difference between my, when my wife's talking to me with her 575 and my friends are talking to me with their you know, smaller 15 watt radios. Uh, there's a big difference in how far apart we can, can communicate. So the 400 bucks for the 575, definitely worth it. And the other thing that's new on the inside that is not easy to see, but you can tell the difference when you turn the radio on is a whole new speaker set by MB Quart. Uh, I have their six speaker, 800 watt uh, JLJT upgrade kit. So all six main speakers, this one, uh, this one now has a legit tweeter in it, which I didn't realize didn't have before, but now that I have it, uh, man, makes a huge difference. So uh, this speaker here, and then the subwoofer is replaced under the seat with uh, this subwoofer enclosure here with two eight inch subs. And oh my gosh, this sounds incredible. I know this doesn't come through on camera, but this sounds so much better than the factory speakers. It, it just sounds so good. So if you're an audio lover, you need to look into the MBE Quartz speaker upgrade. The, the six speaker 800 watt system plus the subwoofer with another 400 watt amp. Um, so you've got 1200 watts of power, still using the factory radio, and it just sounds incredible. Uh, not cheap, so uh, the, the six speaker setup is just, just under $2,200. The subwoofer kit is about $820, so all in just over $3,000, $3,010 for the speaker upgrade. Whether or not that is worth it depends on how much you like listening to music when you're, when you're out on the road. And we listen to music a lot, so I am super happy with this upgrade. MB Quartz did provide this for us, uh, actually in both rigs, um, and the sound quality is just incredible. No regrets there. Absolutely love it. Um, huge improvement. Another thing that's new in the back of the Gladiator is the air compressor from Morflate. It is their 10.6. It is a twin air compressor. Um, I ran that Smittybilt air compressor for almost 10 years and it served me well, but my wife got the uh, ARB twin and I was just crazy impressed with how fast that thing is. Uh, the Morflate is also a twin air compressor that rivals the ARB twin and how fast it can air up all four tires at once. And it comes in at only 230 bucks. I did buy that and have no regrets of spending that money on that air compressor. It is doing very well living in the back of the, the Gladiator and um, definitely rivals the 600 bucks we spent on my wife's ARB twin. Um, and, and I very much like it. And finally, we've got the diff cover from AFE Power. Uh, that was purchased by me. It's over $400. I wish I didn't have to spend the money. Some people argue that I didn't, um, but it does hold quite a bit more diff fluid than the factory diff cover has. I've got a whole recent video on why I had to re-gear again and why I went with this diff cover. Um, but yeah, I, I paid 400, over 400 bucks for that diff cover. Wish I didn't have to. I was very sad, but... In the end, I think it's going to be worth it, just helping with the cooling, with the extra diff fluid and the, the, the fins and all that. But uh, wish I didn't have to, but I did. But yeah, I, I, I bought that. Well, I think that pretty much covers it. Uh, there's been a lot of updates in the last nine months, and this thing just continues to get more and more dialed in. And oh my gosh, I absolutely love my Gladiator and how it's built. It is... It is really, really nice. In that original video, the grand total came up to just over $86,000. Now, with all the new upgrades, with the larger tires, the suspension, the stereo, the rack, the drawer slide, all the little things, the bumper, um, we are now at $106,221.83. Uh, so it's in increased about $20,000 in the last nine months. Um, and it, it's just incredible. I say it all the time, this is the best rig that I've ever owned. And as much time as I spend out driving, off-road, camping in this thing, 
I absolutely love the setup. It is so dialed in and I'm just so happy with it. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, you know, $106,000, that's a lot of money. Uh, but considering what we put this thing through and where it takes us, I, I think it is. I think it is well worth it. Uh, I, I just think it is. It is so incredible. It would be very easy to even take this so much further. Uh, you know, throw throw an alu cab canopy on on the top and deck out the whole thing with goose gear. Um, there's definitely you know, higher end fridges than that. Replace the inexpensive rear bumper with you know, a, a, a lot nicer bumper there. Uh, do a rear seat delete, put all goose gear stuff in there. There's a lot more money that could be spent on a Gladiator if, you, if you're just trying real hard. Um, it, 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 it's pretty easy. But let me know in the comments what you think about the build, about the choices. Um, it, what would you do differently? Um, you know, th this isn't for everybody, but it's absolutely perfect for me. Be sure and give the video a like if you would. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you like the content that we're putting out uh, and you want to support this channel, uh, gain access to special content, special events that we do, and access to all of our GPS data, check out that Patreon link in the description of this video. And for Ozark Overland Adventures merchandise, go to shopoverlandapparel.com. I'll see you next time. Bye.